Bobbledy, bobbledy, bop. We are back. We are back. Shout out to the CIA, the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies, the FBI. Your godfather is back. And the house, and the house is packed. Got that going. Audio seems to be clicking. There's been an issue with, um, da -da 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 -da. there's been an issue with Ecamm, some of the software I'm using, so we're updating software. So, uh, let's see, shout out to, oh man, we got folks coming through, oh my God. Shout out to Chrissy, came through with a $5. Shout out to Armand, shout out to Blue Collar Henry. Bless you, Godfather, I know you folks on the black community are what your best is for all communities. This message is for all communities. My message is for men, I'm a black man, when I break down the folk, the stats, yes, I'm going to start breaking it down onto a more of a global focus, but my eye is still going to be focused on my community just like anyone else's. But as we move on, yes, this is for everybody, not just, not just, um, not only the black community, but I gotta, you gotta stay, you gotta stay with what, 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 what you know. So we're gonna start putting in some favorites over here. Shout out to where are we at? Da -da 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 -da. Blue Collar Henry. Shout out to uh, Jamal. Let's see. Shout out to Iwan. Detroit Red came through. Uh, one Scorpio became member level two. Andre. Shout out for nine nine. Tuition for Men's Week. Appreciate it. Shout out to Technological Chaos. Technological Chaos came through. Been a member. At level two for months. So, you know, let's go ahead and put technological chaos over in favorites. We're going to star you. We're going to start putting people over in the favorite side. So your comments stand out. So where's Lou Caisley? We need to go ahead and star up Lou Caisley too. A free gets the star. Shout out to John the Great 18. Here's, uh, here's to you, Kevin. Appreciate you, my friend. Shout out to Leonardo Navarro. Men's weight. Let's hear it. Big dog, Nate Taylor. Nate Taylor's a G, been coming through for a minute. Nate, join the panel, man. Join the panel, representing the brothers out there in the military extremely well. Nate Taylor out there holding it down on the West Coast. Of course, everybody know Big Deshaun got to get a, Big Deshaun got to get a star above all stars. Deshaun comes through, man, and he's always the, the uh, captions guy. The world can't move until Sean say so. Deshaun say move, the world moves. 
So Nate Taylor, I don't see you in here when I get back through you. Uh, I'm going to start you up. Shout out to Jared. You became a star as well. Claudine became a member. Uh, shout out to uh, Elmo. Shout out to James. Gus Jenkins says, cover charge. Joel Ruiz, appreciate it, my friend. King Sean, appreciate it. Prosper, shout out to you. Chris Jones said, get those likes up. The Godfather is back. Shout out to Mr. Steele. I was going to trick off tonight, but here's to the men, my friend. That's what's up. That's what up. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. They came through again. Shout out to Don May came through with the, oh, he came through with the mega load. Oh, 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 Don. Don has become the stream sponsor, so we got to go ahead and put that up in lights, baby. Add that to the broadcast. Bam! It's been a long time. Had to get started with Men's Week. Shout out to my EAs and my tax account at Grinding Season. Fellas, there you go, Don May. Shout out to Luke Casley again. Uh, Kevin, Sam Mr. Samuels, on occasion you mentioned a man having several lives uh, throughout life. Can you elaborate on this topic? Appreciate it. I'm going to do my best to get to everything, guys. I got a program over there, but that's going to keep running over there. Um, we're going to do our best to uh, respond to as many of the super chats as we can. But guys, as you know, uh, it starts to get a little cumbersome over here. But hey, anyway, we're back. It's men's week. It's men's week. It's men's week. It's men's week. And as I kick off this monologue, got to move that out of the way because the camera will focus on it. As I kick off this monologue, got to tell you, the uh, fragrance of the day, we start off with one from Le Labo, Guayac 10, Japanese exclusive, kind of hard to get a hold of. That's why I don't talk about some of these. And then another one from London. This fragrance is 11 years old. It didn't change colors, but that's some good juice. Poivre 23. Sweet, sexy. Sweet, sexy in a bottle. Golly. But I had to give out one for everybody. One of my top 25 fragrances of all time. Look at that. The bottle's almost gone. Nasamato Pardon. Oh, that stuff is so good. Especially this time of year. When you just got a Floss on somebody, that's what you want to do. Not some motto, pardon. All right, here's what we're going to get into. First of all, my young Thundercats. Today, we're going to break it down between the ages of 18 and the age of 29. The age of 18, the age of 29. That is what I consider to be the Esquire phase of life. Okay? The Esquire phase of life. That's, think about it as, you know, the young man getting out into the world. I want you guys to go check out a video I did where I said what I would do differently if I was your age. If I was between age 18 and 35, what I would do. But what I'm going to be focusing on this week is 18 to 29 and 30 to 35, I'm going to put a probably 70% of the content is going to be targeted there. And the rest of the content will be targeted 20, 20 to 30%, 35 plus. Because re realistically, man, YouTube skews younger. And that's where guys really need much more of an impact. And you really can't afford the book sessions. I mean, we appreciate you guys' support and all that stuff, but I'm not, I'm not crazy. I know a lot of you guys can't afford to, to book a one-on-one -on -one with me. I certainly could have, couldn't have booked a one-on-one -on -one with me back in those days. So I'm going to try to do my best to impart as much knowledge as I can uh, at this level. Um, so what is an Esquire? An Esquire used to be kind of like a... Let me, let me read you. Uh-uh. <clears throat> Where is it? All right. Esquire, Esquire, Esquire. When a computer dies on you, man, that sucks. When a computer dies on you, it it changes your world. I ain't gonna even much lie. 
everything is switched up over here. An Esquire, a youth who is in training in his manhood training. Now, don't get offended when I say you're in training, you're in process, you're evolving, you're developing. Okay? This is the hit squad. The Henrys, Henrys are high earners, not rich yet. This is the Henrys, the hit squad. Henrys in training. Esquires, you, are, you have now been knighted hit squad. What, why is this so important? Why is this phase of life so important? This phase of life is so important because if you start strong and don't let up, you will have ex, you, will, you put yourself in a position to have exponential results in the remainder of life. If you start strong and <clears throat> and that means the years of 18 to your college years. Starting strong in your college years will put you in a position to have outpacing your competition. Why? Because most <clears throat> across history, you can look of men of wealth, means, power, and universally, these men can conquer the world, conquer civilizations from Alexander the Great on through Shaka Zulu, it don't matter. But the downfall usually has something to do with his handling of a woman. Not the woman per se, his handling of a woman, okay? So, in the Esquire phase, 18 to 29, and then there's the next phase, 30 plus. At 30 plus, you, you, you graduate from like junior high to high school. This is when you when you decide your path. You're either gonna go down what I call the GQ path, or you're gonna go down what I consider the bachelor path, playboy bachelor. But both of these men are going to, in my, in my, and in, in, in what I'm thinking about, are gonna be kind of an elite level men, the top 20% of men. That's who I cater my content to, guys who wanna be in the top 20%. So in the Esquire phase, you need to know what's coming next. And what's coming next is 30 plus. And when you go GQ or when you go Bachelor, those are two different things. But I'll give you a quick preview. GQ, I kind of fit into that, I fit into that category. It's described as a guy who uh, dresses nicely, uh, tend to be very, you know, tends to be very well liked uh, and has a broad social network. These guys, almost a hundred, a large percentage of these men work in corporate America. They are not entrepreneurs. Okay. These are the guys who are climbing corporate ladders. They may choose to become entrepreneurs later on, but at 30, they are not. OK, and it's to that regard. This is the group of men that of all the men, this is the group of men who are more likely going to choose marriage. OK. And then what after that we have after that, we have the, the like the, the bachelor phase. Think of Leonardo DiCaprio, Jamie Foxx, somebody like that. OK, guys who are much more rugged individualists. They focus on being financially fit. Fit. They focus on being financially fit, uh, being physically fit, and having fun with the ladies. But they are men on their own. These tend to be much more of the entrepreneurs, the investors. These are the guys who don't even know if they want children. They are building a life or they're not they're not big they're not family men how about that but they're not hermits either these men work hard play hard and they enjoy themselves so as a young esquire knowing what's coming up are you going to go down the family family are you going to go down the family and legacy path or are you going to go down the path of a well lived individual life either way your choice okay Okay, 
Either way, your choice. But why is it so important that you start strong? Starting strong means a few things. One, understanding that in the Esquire phase of life, you're, you're at your lowest. Your, comp your competency level is low. Your money's low. But what you have is an outsized opportunity to socialize. College, college provides, my Esquire guys, college, universities, and, and, and clubs provide you guys a large opportunity to sharpen your social skills. And it's your social skills that are going to help you build what's necessary, your network. You, are focused, you can build a network. As a young Esquire, you're focusing on building your network. Now, I've, I've talked about the phases in life, Esquire to GQ to Bachelor. There are also three basic masculine uh, archetypes. Let me kind of go over those. There's the refined archetype, me, kind of like that. There's the rogue, think of like Han Solo kind of character, uh, Johnny Depp when he plays Captain Jack, the pirate, you know. That, that, these guys march to the beat of their own beat. And then there's the the rake. The rake is much more the, the, the ladies' man. It kind of blends both of them, okay? I'm not going to get necessarily into the masculine archetypes as, today as much as I'm going to get into the phases. And when you're, when you're starting out, 18 to 23, this is where I'm assuming you're going to have your work, you're getting your schoolwork done. But you don't need to be sitting in your dorm room play, or playing video games. You need to become involved on campus. This is where you join the joining the groups. See, see, and here's the problem, especially a lot of, a lot of young men have. A lot of guys have fallen into this lone gunslinger. I don't want to join a group. I want to be a man on my own. I don't want to be a, a follower. I want to be an alpha male lone lion. That's bullshit. Lion or tiger? Go back to the next phase of life. Esquires, okay? You're either going to become a lion or a tiger. A tiger is a solitary animal. Apex predator, solitary. They don't they don't have they don't have a pack or a pride. Okay? Lions are social cats. GQ, lion. Bachelor, tiger. Okay? Think about those two things. But in, as you're developing, you have to figure out what works for you. And the most important thing is you want to get your, your, your competency together. What you want to do for a lifetime, your profession, your skill set. And then when you get out here after college, after, after trade school or whatever, and you're putting in your 60 hours a week, you're working your full-time job and your part-time job, this is where you focus on your physical fitness, your financial fitness, and the fitness of your social network, not women, not women. And how is this going to happen? This doesn't mean you walk around life like a virgin. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. But you just stop trying to manage or handle women at this level because I'm about to give you guys a gift. One of the biggest problems that Esquire's, the Esquire phase of life is you got to stop being angry at the disadvantages in the sexual marketplace. Between the age of 18 and 25, you are at the worst phase of sexual marketplace dynamics. And you got to stop being upset with it. You got to stop being preoccupied with it. You got to stop worrying about it. Because unless you hit the genetic lottery, and, or unless you came from a group of men who taught you game, you are likely going to be in the 80% of guys who get laid as they can. Me, I'm going to tell you, for me, I was more fortunate than a lot of guys because I, I was a good, to, I, I, I talked to ladies, I was good, I had a lot of women around all the time. I, and to deal with that shortcoming, because I wasn't, um, raised the way I'm talking about, I joined a fraternity to help build my social network. 
I used everything to my advantage. And this is why I tell you guys, you got to group up. You have to have your wolf pack. You need to run with your boys. I want you guys to look at the movie, look at the movie, A Beautiful Mind, and look at when Russell Crowe played John Nash and they were at the bar and they all went to the bar and they focused on all trying to get laid and they didn't try to go for the hot chick. Far too many of you guys end up getting one-itis. You end up finding one woman or something. You preoccupy, fixate, stop worrying about it. You're not going to really win like you want to win because you don't have enough leverage. And if you can just understand this most point, stop being upset or angry with the, with the inequity or disadvantage you have in the sexual marketplace and start enjoying life because no women don't women don't like whether you like them or not they don't like being around guys who are upset and tense all the time better to be a guy who's out here having fun with the guys living your life and doing your thing women are drawn to good times fun they're not drawn to debates and argument and that kind of stuff okay so 18 to 23, college campus, hey man, scarce times, scarce times. But after you graduate, this is why I told you, moving into a happening city, getting a couple of roommates, and focusing on making your place a cool place to bring women to when you choose to deal with them. But you're not focusing a lot on really trying to date because you're not in a position to effectively manage your woman anyway. Modern women are a thing and it's a, it's a problem in the West. Okay. And that's black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Middle Eastern, and other. They're all, they're modern women across the board. This is not just unique to the black community. So we knock that shit off. So, and to become an elite level man, a modern man, an avant-garde man, a contemporary man, a man who's in this modern time, we're not going to go back to traditional roles, Ozzy and Harriet, father knows best. You're going to have to end up becoming a, a an apex predator and learn what you want. But between the ages of 18 and 29, the world will try to tell you what works for you, what's best. You can't know that without trying a lot of things. This is the sampling phase of life. Like I said, I would live like in, in Atlanta, live as close to Buckhead as possible. In LA, I live as close to Beverly Hills as possible. Uh, in New York City, I live as close, I live in Manhattan. In Miami, I live in Brickell. I, I would, you need to be where the action is. And you need to move. You need to also travel. Leave this country. Not to Mexico, not to Jamaica. Do those, but get out of this country and try lots of things. If I were your age, you know, passport, you're going to see traveling this year. Pick up another language, all these other things. But here's the thing. What, what a lot of guys can do a lot of things in this area right, but it's, it's the management of women that screws you up. You got to realize you can't. And the guys who can, don't be mad at them. Don't, don't, don't debate with them because you'll have your turn. It's just not your turn yet. And you're at the, you're at the phase of life where it's just not your turn. You got to wait for the upperclassmen to graduate before you can start. Now, if there are guys who are just naturally the jawline dude and got the game and women like them, Hey, man, befriend those guys. Befriend those guys. Uh, and if y'all have some of the same core values and want to do some of the same things, run with, popular, run with popular guys or know the popular people. You want, to be, you want to be on the list. You don't have to run the list, but be on the list. You want to be invited to the parties, invited to the gatherings, such and so. You want to be somebody that other people want to have around yes and see right now a lot of guys are like well i don't want to be a follower i don't want to be this okay making money is a social activity and success is shared lone wolves die tiger being a tiger being a lone wolf out there 
I'm a cowboy on a steel horse island. That shit has a lot of mythology, especially in the black community. Man, you just make yourself an easy mark. That's why I did that whole debate about pay for play versus tricking and this and that. Look, man, you should be worried on outcomes. Outcomes. And anytime you deal with the opposite sex, there needs to be an outcome in mind. And one of the bigger problems that we have today, that, see, there's dating. See, 18 to 29, you're in the dating phase. And dating is different than a relationship. Dating is short term, meant to end. Say it with me now, fellas. Say it with me now. Dating. Dating is short term and meant to end. Dating is short term and meant to end for a semester, for a summer. It's short term and meant to end. The more of them you end, the better you will feel. Go into it knowing it's meant to end and enjoy the experience for what it was. Putting too many expectations upon dating is dumb because dating is dumb. It's meant to end. It's like ice cream in the summertime. You're on a clock. It's ice cream on the summertime. You're on a clock. <laughs> no, no. Sorry, Didi. Ice cream on the summertime. Popsicle on the summertime. Tastes good. Meant to end. And you don't need to be in a relationship. One of the worst things to do is to be in a relationship 18 to 29 because you're, you're wasting valuable skill time. See, a lot of times what guys got screwed up is because you got into a relationship between the ages of 18 and 21. And when she was hitting 23, you were, you, you can look back and see, no relationships, just date. You want to come out of your 20s, no sexually transmitted disease, no kids, no emotional scars or baggage. And the best way to ensure that is to keep it light, keep it casual, be upfront. Gentlemen, this is where the direct approach to dating becomes so critical. Dealing with women, understanding you don't have enough juice. You don't have enough. You don't have enough what it takes to, to, to nail her down. So going up to a going up to a woman who's an eight and saying, look, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Let's kick it. When I was in my 20s, I dated women that I could not afford to kick to keep. But they wanted to have fun. And because I could keep my mouth closed. They're like, yeah, sure. I'll kick it with you. Then you see them later on, a year or two later, they married to some rich guy. You have to have the rental car mentality, guys. Because at, after 30, you can be that guy. But see, it becomes a different twist after that. When you're in your 30s, you got to realize you ain't going to be her first. You're going to be what, unless you get her when she's very young, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. 18 to 29. I'm going to open up the call line and start answering some questions. Um, let me scroll through here to see where I get some of the bigger ones. Okay, I'm going to open up <clears throat> I'm going to open up Zoom and see if Zoom is, if Zoom is still having that problem that they were having over the weekend with all that Crackle, crickly audio. You know what? Maybe I'll just do StreamYard. I think I'll do StreamYard. I don't even feel like dealing with Zoom right now. Well, I say that, but. All right. Guys, do me a favor. When I bring you on, I need to know your name, your age, and then your question. Your name, your age, and then your question. That's all we need to know. Your name, your age, your question. 
No offense. I don't. We don't need the long monologue. Recording uh, in progress. All that other kind of stuff. Just kind of get to it. Your name, your age, and your question. Uh, and that way, we'll get through as much as possible. Why is it important to not be mad at women in your 20s? Because they have the power. They're in a position of power, and it's human nature to use to use your advantages. It is human nature to use your advantage. And women at that age are going to use their advantage. You can still have fun. You can kick it with them. But man, don't don't think you're gonna nail one down. And, and, and you would and the thing is it'll be stupid to try to. Even if you did nail her down, you're not gonna be happy at the main upkeep cost. It'll be like getting a Rolls Royce. Getting a Rolls Royce in your 20s may sound cool, but the upkeep costs and the maintenance. And so, and, and as much as guys talk about being on their purpose, being on their grind, such and so forth, one thing that tends to frustrate more men is the maintenance of their feminine companions. Because you can't make women do what you want them to do. You can't make them act how you want them to act. And you can't make them be how you want them to be. And that's what frustrates a lot of young men. And I get it. But we're modern men. And what we're going to do is like modern women is a different connotation than modern men. We're going to make modern men, uh, modern sexy savages, contemporary men, avant-garde men, elite men. I'm going to come up with a word that uh, denotes modern men, but you're going to have to accept that being a modern man is different than it was than it was for that different time. Other men had the advantage of of being able to work one job and being able to provide for an entire family. It's not the same, guys. It's simply not the same. Moderators, keep putting the link in the chat room. It's not the same. So it will be better for you guys to, instead of being upset with women, I mean, understand male and female nature. I want you to do that. I don't expect you to go back to sleep. I want you to understand male and female nature. I want you to understand intersectional, I mean, uh, sexual marketplace dynamics. I want you to understand all of the tenets of everything we talk about. Then I want you to act accordingly. Act accordingly. I was talking to a young guy today in his, in his 20s and he's from his people are from uh, Belarus. And I'm like, man, I wouldn't be worried about a woman until at least I'm at least 35. Because you're going to need more than guys did in any other time in life. We got to just get to that point. And Another thing, going out in groups. I'm not really a big fan on uh, going out with groups of men, yes. But you also, let me also give you guys another piece of advice. Becoming friends with women in college, beautiful women, to listen to how they think. This is what, volunteering yourself for the friend zone to key women, remove sex from the table and opens women up to telling you the truth. Once you hear how women really tend to think from their friend zone perspective, change your it'll change the, it'll change your it'll change your game. It'll change the it'll change your idea on a lot of different things. Okay? I'm bringing people in one at a time. Volunteering to be in the friend zone. Now, when I say volunteer to be in the friend zone, I mean that. Volunteer to be in the friend zone. Don't try to get your way out. You, you, you're getting, you're spying. You're a double agent. Unmute yourself. Alex. I mean, Austin. I, you muted yourself. I didn't mute you.
Oh. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We got to get off you. Hello. How old are you? Uh, thirty-three. Well, all right. Uh, what's your question? Oh, I just um, I've been having a, a hard time like the finding like you. I've been watching a lot of your stuff lately, and like watching you the way you talk to women and how they're like they want these traditional values or modern like tradition and modern values like how do you sort through that and find somebody that it like aligns with like what you're looking for what's your question how do you how do you how do you find a good woman yeah pretty much like how do you find like here's what i want here's what i want from you guys the watching my videos and all that other preamble guys please cut that part out i don't need to know the backstory just get to the question the question is how do you find a, a woman that aligns with your values for what outcome uh marriage long term like just somebody because i'm trying to build hold myself on, hold, up on, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on i'm talking to the guys 18 to 29 you're you're in a different phase so, oh, sorry. I, but 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 I'll, I'll answer the question. Um, are you in a position to have your wife quit? What quit her uh, job? Yeah, yes. Take care of somebody? I think so. I mean, I'm not. Do you, uh, do you make enough I'm money to? Do you make enough money to hire your woman? Um, uh, I, I make about like fifty thousand with bonuses or extra no. bonuses. Like no, you don't. no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. I mean, that's just the reality. You don't make enough to hire your woman. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, no, not really. No, I mean that's fine. Like I'm, I'm getting there, but I, yeah. I but, but getting, but, but see, but, but the, so, if I told you where to go find them, and right. you're not, you're not ready for them. Right. But this is a perfect. This is perfect. What I mean. So. Austin, you're kind of where I was saying, why spend any time thinking about a wife if you're not in a position to hire her? I agree. Knowing what modern women are. I do. I agree with that because like. All I right. All right. But if you but if, but if you agree with it, really agreed with it, why would you even ask the question? Um, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm just like. You know, I am working hard at getting like furthering my career, and I'm just tired of no, being like. No, no, no. It's because you men are today are romantics, and you want love. You want love and con consistent sex, and somebody to rub your stomach. And you're not there yet, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you nailed it for sure. I know. So this yeah. is 2020. 2022 is about self awareness. Don't lie to yourself. Hey man, I'm right there with you. I like. This okay, is, but if you're right there year, with me, okay, you can't over. So. You can't over. You can't talk. You can't talk to me. If you're right there with me, then understand, you're a modern man. You know what the dating environment is like. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, if you can't, you put yourself in the position. It's this is where I also I'm going to talk about marriage. I would not be worried about marriage and make this clear. I would not be worried. I would not be concerned with trying to be married, guys, unless I can in my, unless I can employ my woman. Maximum leverage. Right. So you're not in that position, my friend. So yeah. and no guy is. No guy is in your financial position. So at best, you'd be looking for some sort of wife who was a partner, 50-50 or whatever, whatever. And that's fraught with all kind of different issues that I really don't try to address. It exists right. for most people, but that's not the focus of my content. But I want to answer your question. At 33, are you working 60 hours a week that you're getting paid for each hour? Uh, no, I'm working. I mean, I have a salary, so, but I work. You're working 40 hours work. a week in your job? More, for okay. sure. All yeah. right. Well, see, one of the things I say is, where's your part-time job? Are you working 60 hours a week? Oh, I travel a lot for work, so I, I can't really have a steady job where I live. Okay. Like my, I work remote and travel. Well, a lot. unfortunately, I'm gonna just be yeah. honest. Unfortunately, if you're working over forty hours a week and you're making fifty thousand dollars, you need to go get more, become more valuable. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a new no. position. I've had this job for no, two months man, I don't now. care about the position. I care that you're 33 and you're yeah. making $50,000 a year. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I'm not college educated. So like, I kind of have to do care. I, have. I, 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 I get, I get, I, okay. Right. See, this is when, this is when you guys start to, okay. Austin. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're college educated or not. The fact of the matter is you want a wife. And you can't afford to pay for a wife and kids on your own. I can't change the environment or the culture. Neither can you, right? Right. right. If you can't afford to buy something, it doesn't matter how much you want it. You either go do what it takes to acquire the money or you buy something else. And right. this is why I tell guys, you're still, a lot of guys are still wanting wives on 1950s terms. You're not in a position to own, have a modern wife or modern times. You can have a, a rental woman, a girlfriend, but that's short term. Children don't come from that. So if you're not college educated, fine. Whatever it is, I don't, and I'm not going to concern myself with what you do, but whatever it is in this world, men get compensated by our competence. Right. Go become more competent if you want to take on the responsibility of these good women and such and so forth. Because you got to yeah, ask yourself, a, listen, listen, you got to ask yourself a question. If Bob and David raised their daughter to be the kind of woman you're talking about, right? Right. Would you, would, would those men want their daughter to go to you? Or to the guy standing next to you who had the similar core values and things like that, and he was making double what you were making. Oh, yeah. I mean, of course they're going to go with the more well, then secure. Then, person, right? So it has nothing to do with her. You're yeah. looking at women that you want, and they're going to have fathers who are going to want her to be in the most secure position, go to the highest bidder. This is why sure. I say, guys, if you're not in a position to control the environment, your wife, such and so forth, and you want a long-term relationship and a marriage, look at what's happening in this country right now. It's not a good look. So I really wouldn't be worrying about it at this point is my answer for you. You don't make it. Mostly, like I wasn't really thinking of marriage until like I started listening to your podcast or your show and everything. It's because it's like the way you put it. It's like to be more successful in your career. Well, you really but the thing is, but but the thing is, one comes comes before the other. You don't you don't wives are costs, man. Yeah, you don't you don't just get married. You know, I get what you're saying, but right. but what I think what you're saying is a wife will help me become more successful in my career. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, there was an episode I was watching, and you said like, well, uh, you know, I mean, and I need to get to somebody else too, but that, but you, yeah, and yeah. no, but you, 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 and that's the problem. This is why you didn't start off strong enough to where at yeah. thirty three you should already be moving up the path because the guys I'm talking about um, are earning more. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, okay. I understand. I yeah, play my cards different in my life, but I'm. Trying well, I mean, to get and, and it is what it is, but I'm just, I'm just so. telling you what I okay. Have a good one. Guys, honestly, um, I, I would say that, you know, and the reason I say that I want to be clear, it's we know what the environment is out here, okay? And men who don't have enough leverage tend to get run over. That's why I said I wouldn't even worry about a lot of this stuff until, you know, um, Oh, let's see. Zoom. Oh, you got Come on, guys. Do me a favor. If y'all gonna call into the show, y'all don't have to be in a suit, but you can't You can't be looking like you're just about to start in a rap video with a hoodie on and carrying on, man. That, that, that doesn't work here. Have some respect for my show, please. I'm... Unmute yourself. How old are you? 
All right, what's your question at 18 years old? I don't know. I'm just kind of lost right now. I just wanted okay. to ask, like, uh, what advice you give, like, ATO in the military? Uh, that's a that's a real general question. I need a specific question. I, can't, I mean, no offense, but I can't. That's That's not what this is for. You have a specific problem you're dealing with or a specific, but you're just saying, hey, I'm 18. What should I do with my whole life? I don't know what to tell <laughs> yeah, you. Okay. Yeah, guys, do me a favor. I mean, I, I'm trying to help as much as I can, but it can't just be, hey, pimp my ride. <laughs> you know, come on. All right. What's your question? Is 18 years All right. How old are you? You muted yourself. How old are you? Okay, you got YouTube playing in the background. That needs to be off. All right, guys, Here's if you're in the Zoom room, all right, here's how this is gonna go. If you're in the Zoom room, you can hear what I'm saying. I am going to pick people at random in Zoom. If I hear YouTube playing in the background, I'm just going to drop you and I'm going to move to the next person because right now there are 27 people in here. we got to get some control on this. When, I, when you're there, turn off YouTube, just be in the Zoom call. Be on camera, ready to go, and just have a question concisely because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to announce it anymore. I'm going to start dropping people out. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. How old are you? 18. Okay. What's your question? Um, so I have a social media platform on TikTok with over 400,000 followers. And um, I was wondering how did, you, what was the key factor in you um, growing your platform to the uh, extent that it is and the size okay, that it that's is? That's really not what we're talking about today. It's not social media growth. It's manhood stuff. Yes, sir. Apologies. Right. No problem. Unmute yourself, Cameron. Unmute yourself, Cameron. Hello. Okay. My question to you would be, would 22 be too old to start college? 22 be too old to start college? I turn 22 next Ne um, next what month, would you be going to college for? I mean, that's kind of outside of this. But what are you going to what would you going to college for? Um, I want to. I'm going to get my degree in computer science and double major in petroleum engineering. My job is gonna. My hold job. On, hold on, hold on. Computer science or petroleum engineer double major? Yes. Why? Um, because computer science, my job won't pay for petroleum engineering. That's the job. That's the the degree I want, they start out are about you, 100. Oh no. Are you going to college because you want to go to college or you're going to college because your job will pay for it? I'm actually going to college because I recently became so sober um, after five years. Uh, so, And school was before I became, before I started doing drugs, I was actually like really good in school. Are you so going decided, to college because your job will pay for it or because... I mean, um, and I'm going because I, I want to go because school is for me. I love actually. All right, like, first I, I, of all, I, going to school. Okay. If you want to go to college because you go to college because you want a career. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's the only reason to really go to college today to get a career. And 
honestly going computer for the science, night. petroleum I, engineering. That's a bunch of stuff to be doing. I mean, it's like going no, no, just. No, it's not too. The answer is no. 22, 22, 25 is not too old to go to college if you know what the outcome is. That's the ultimate answer. <laughs> it has nothing. To, it shouldn't have anything to do with the job you have. Whatever. It's the outcome. You go to college to become a professional in something to get a career in something else. That's the only reason I can see going to college as a man today. But the rest of that stuff. Um, Mm-hmm. Because if their job fires you, you still got college. So it doesn't sound right. like you're going. To, but but that's the point. So it doesn't sound like you're going to college because you want to. Um, I'm going for the money. I just don't want to be broke in my in my later years. Okay, that but, are you, but that's not the okay. So I think everybody in the audience understood. I get it. No one wants to be broke in your later years. But. You're going to college to you're going to going to get a degree based on what your company your job will pay for. No, I'm going. Um, I wanted to go for software engineering, but the school I'm going to doesn't offer that, and that's the school that works with my. See, you're um, already in a problem. You're already in a problem. You're already in a problem. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're going to college for the right reasons. I'm not gonna. Look, I wanted to do this, but the school I'm going to doesn't do that. That's not why you go to school. I want to go to school to be an engineer and you find an engineering school to get into and you go. College isn't about convenience. College is about becoming professional. Mm-hmm. Back in the day when the only place you go to get petroleum engineering degrees was back in oil states. If you lived in New York and wanted to be a petroleum engineer, NYU didn't teach that. You carried your ass to... It doesn't sound to me like... You know, doesn't know. I got to move on to the next person because this wasn't even the question. Doesn't sound to me like your why is correct. Your why is because you want some money. That's not why you go to college. That's not why you go because you want a career path. Money is not the money is not a why. It's not a good why. Money is not a good why. Uh, I'm it. Hello. Hey, hey. How uh, how old are you? Uh, 29. I'll be 30 tomorrow, actually. Okay. Uh, what's your question? All right. So, um, uh, I listen to a lot of things you're saying, and uh, I just wanted to know, like, how do you get that group of guys? Uh, you know, I just, you know, stop just- being lazy. Like being around the group. Stop of being lazy. When was, the, when was the last time you went out of your house with the intent of meeting new people? Well, you know what? I meet new. I meet women. When was the, the last guy. time you went out of your house with the intent of meeting new people? Yesterday, actually. Where'd you go? I went bowling. With whom? It was a group of my homegirls. They they go bowling. So I you went did out, not you know. go to the bowling alley with a group of your homegirls with the intent of meeting new people. You went to the bowling alley with your homegirls for recreation. This is what I mean. Like modern women are lazy daters. Modern men are lazy networkers. You go out of your house with the intent of meeting people to places where you have a chance of dialoguing with people, not at a bowling alley. People are bowling at a bowling alley. True. So where would that place be? No, 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 no. I answered the question. See, I answered the question. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I said stop being lazy. I got you. I'm saying stop being lazy. And so, so what it is, see, and one of the things about being lazy, here's why, here's why I said that's it. One, because I give you one question. Number one, number two, is when I give you the unlock, it's lazy to keep saying, well, where are those places? What city do you live in? I'm in New York. God damn. Where's my slap button? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What the yeah, fuck? Not, You're in New it's, York, it's, it's, and you can't it's, figure it's, out where to go. Man, go to the chamber. Not, find your... Not, no, no, no. So no. Find... Nah, I, 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 I don't want to talk, man. 
Uh-uh. You're in the biggest city. You're in the most happening city. Man, get out of here. I mean, stop hanging out with hey, uh, stop hanging out with the women at the bowling alley. That's what you do. Whatever your profession is, go to happy hour. Go to chamber of commerce meetings. Well, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. Lazy. We're lazy. I go to happy hour though. I, I do go to happy hour. Okay. Well, uh, but I got. I you. stand on what All I right. said. You go to happy hour by yourself. Yes, I do. And do you go to happy? And when you go there, how many how many people do you walk over, approach, and talk with the specific intent to strike up small talk conversation? Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, I, then we I, get I, the right fuck off, that. my. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You're lazy. I, I got. <laughs> I'm just seriously. I mean, look, we want these high powered networks that feed us business opportunities, investment opportunities, mating and dating opportunities, and we want it all just to happen. No, just like you don't, you understand cold approaching and dating. Guys, you don't get a wolf pack acting like a pup. Fucking New York. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's fucking lazy, bro. Lazy. Two things no coach can fix is uh, cowardice and laziness. So let me explain something to you guys. When I was building my network, I worked my 40-hour week job. I worked my part-time job, and I still had to go sunset receptions for the chamber, uh, evening receptions, happy hours, networking meetings. Guys, socializing it socializing is how you become more successful this whole notion of i'm gonna work hard and be a solitary it's not not very good okay but that's it brian go ahead hello mr kevin mr kevin, mr. kevin how are you doing i'm good how old are you no, i'm 25 okay what's your question my question is um how does someone find a purpose in life when they're deciding what they want to do a um purpose? they have several things they want to do in a life. purpose yeah like what is the what could what be... do you do oh no 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 your purpose uh is, your purpose is your purpose you don't you don't just you discover it what are you trying what do you do for a living uh i'm a mechanic a diesel mechanic okay and how many hours a week are you working uh i do 50 to 60 hours okay when you're not at work what are you doing man i list i like music i listen to a lot of music so you and, and that's passive. Yes. Okay. So what do you do that involves people when you're not working? I'm nothing. 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 What was the last time you actually learned something outside of your profession? I haven't learned anything new because Thank I've you. been focused. You don't find work. a purpose. You're just working. Lazy. Yes. A lot of you guys are just lazy. Simple as that. You're lazy. You go to work, go home and chill. That's cool. Well, I but you got no, no. Well, I got to get to. Myself. I got to get. No, doesn't matter. No offense, but you don't find a, you don't find a purpose by doing this by chilling. Every time I've said something, move, move, try this, try that. I require activity, and this is why becoming a high value man is so important. It's because you must be active. Far too many guys are. I'm working, and I'm and I'm in, and I like my hobby. That's cool, but that's not a purpose. It's not going to find you. You got to become more active. Uh, I don't know what that background noise is. So you got to become more active. Sorry about that. We gonna mute you. Seems like sometimes people have background noise. Uh, Robert, hello. Hi, how you doing? Thanks I'm for taking right. me in. I'm uh, all right. How old are you? Uh, I'm 22. All right. So what's your question? So my question is, uh, when I was a young kid, just getting out of high school, I realized that I really wanted to be a doctor. You wanted and to be a what? I, I wanted want... to be a doctor. Hey, say again? I wanted to be a doctor, a physician. Doctor. Okay. So yes. what's the question? Not my parents' choice, my choice. The problem was I realized that it will take about eight years in school, it's going to cost me a lot of money. 
I won't have my independence until I'm What's 13. the question? My question is, I'm, I'm in the middle of this conundrum whether I should keep pursuing this long degree. Or Do you want to be a, okay, I, I mean, a medical doctor? That's right, MD. What kind of doctor would you, what kind of doctor would you be? Neuroscience, sir. Excuse me? Neuroscience, sir. What kind of doctor would you be? A, a, no, a no, 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 the question. Listen to the question. Don't cut me out. What kind of doctor would you be if you really didn't want to be a doctor? Oh, if I really didn't want to be a doctor, I guess I'll just be a general practitioner. No, no, no. You would be a shitty doctor. I thought of, I, th I used to think I wanted to go to medical school until I realized I only want to go to medical school for the title of doctor and the money. I didn't really want to take care of patients. <laughs> If you don't want to, if you don't want to deal with the patients, if you don't want to really do what it says, the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm, and you really don't want to, you don't sound like you want to be a doctor, much less a surgeon. No. I had the same no. question. I didn't want to be. I, I wanted the things. I didn't want. I didn't want the responsibility. Would you want a neurosurgeon operating on you? Oh, absolutely not. Like you. My whole family have been doctors, and I've always I been. What, what was the question I asked? Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. You're, you're right. You're Chinese? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, well, tell mom and dad to kick rocks. They chose their life. You choose yours. This ain't China. This is the United States. You get to pick. Mm -hmm. What I'm scared is the second option isn't going so well either. Well, so I am in between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Welcome to being a grown up. We yeah. do what we have to do until we do what we don't want. I mean, if you don't want to be a doctor, you got to be something. Do. Okay. You I have do. to do what you want to do. Okay. Gentlemen, your life is your life. Some mm -hmm. people don't suffer from having parents that give them no direction. Some people come from parents that give them too much direction. It's your life. Stop picking a career based solely on money. You have to pick a career based upon your why and, and income. But here's the thing. When you choose to be something like a doctor, lawyer, whatever like that, I got to move it to the next person. You guys incur substantial investment costs. And after you've got eight years into medicine or law, it's kind of hard to turn around and you're like, well, damn, I really don't want to do that. You got law school debt. Again, why are you, if you're in, if you're in medical, if you're in, if you're going to go to medical school, this is a problem. Most people go get a, an undergraduate degree that's not worth a lot. And then they realize that by the time they look for the professional degree, like law, or medicine, they really don't want to do it, and they're kind of stuck. I'm only talking to the people who are on camera. So if you're not on camera, I'm not even going to bring you up. Hello, Nick. How old are you? All right, what's your question, Nick? So I feel like I've kind of found my wolf pack over the past couple of years. I've um, found some people that are like doing well and whatnot, and some friends I can trust. Um, but recently, I've kind of discovered that one of those people is kind of a snake um and isn't really what's your question in Nick? it for all of us what, to succeed what's your question what's what ultimate would you do what's, if you what's found somebody question? in right i'm getting there if how what would you what would you do with somebody that you found was a snake in your wolf pack well, there's a uh find out if somebody was a snake in my wolf pack yeah, yeah. Uh, you just cut them out or would you well yeah so oh, that's a simple that's easy excommunicado that's easy okay that's fair hey. I, I was just kind of getting kind of confused about it because it's I overthink it a little bit you know how can you how can you have how can you have somebody in your wolf pack that's a snake that well I recently like no 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 how can you like how can you sleep crap, yeah. no 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 okay. guys please don't over talk me please your wolf pack is your strength and your security how can you have there's the old adage there's no honor amongst thieves if you know someone is already suffers from low ethics or you can't trust them, why would you have them? No, excommunicado, gotta go. 
Okay. Weak Wolf. Well, I appreciate the advice, man. All right, Weak Wolf. I, yeah, that's an easy one. And, and be happy that you found them out before it was too big of a deal. Abraham, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so... um, How old are you? I am 38. All right, and what's the question? Um, I set a, I set a path on focusing on working on myself and getting a relationship. Um, but the jobs that I'm now getting are forcing me to reconsider traveling a lot. So I currently make about- What's the, que one, what's the question? You guys- my, please. My, my, my question is, my question is, should I stay on the path that I'm, I'm going on or should I start back into the traveling and kind of forego the relationship things. Relationship. What's the purpose of the relationship? You know, marriage, family. Okay, sort of okay. You a relationship. You you're looking to marry this person? No, I haven't. I haven't found anybody yet. So with I, traveling, it's okay. It's, I'm go ahead. See, this is what I mean. This is why I get confused with the preamble. You don't have a relationship. Correct. So what's the question? My question is, should I focus on cultivating that relationship? With or what? Go back cultivating relationship with what? With getting out there and getting a relationship. You don't have anybody. Yeah, but I, I mean, it's going to take effort to get somebody. So. Okay. So the question, being, the question being is, reasonable, are you saying the job you will be taking would be prohibitive from finding a relationship? Absolutely. Why? The amount of hours and the travel. Uh, would you be traveling nationally or internationally? What? Really depends on the project, but mostly it, it could be international, yes. Okay. Uh, but, sir, it goes back to you don't have a relationship. So Correct. how do you expect... Okay, look, you can't plan a life on something you don't have. That's really what it comes down to. I don't I don't know how to tell you what to focus on. It's not like you saying I'm with this person and we're in a relationship. You're saying should I take a job that requires me to travel uh or should I just put down that real possibility for the possibility that I would be in a relationship? That's what you're basically asking me. If I'm if I'm clear, it's kind of sort of yes. Okay, when was your last relationship? My last relationship was about five years ago. Okay, why 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 can't you be in a relationship? Um, I kind of get absorbed. I kind of get um absorbed into my work. Okay, so this makes no sense. Should I take a job or focus on a relationship? But I'm not in a relationship because I get absorbed. You ain't had a relationship in five years. I think what you're doing, dude, is you're wishing, you're, you're planning for a relationship you don't have. And you're trying to, and that's why I keep focusing on the fact of what are we talking about. Okay. What out, do, do you want a, a relationship? Yes. What are you doing to fix your issues? Um, that's one of the reasons why I stopped traveling. No, 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 no. Your issues. Work is not an issue. It takes work. up a lot of my time. Yes, it does. No, work is not an issue. Work is not an issue. Work okay. is an excuse. So everybody you work with is single. Mm, the people that yeah. do the the person the, the 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 people who do your job are all single. Usually, the road warriors are pretty single. Yes. Uh huh. The road warriors. But and, at what, and what age do people stop becoming a road warrior? Around my age. Uh huh. You need to work. There's something going on. Or well, you need to, because as a 38 year old man, you've passed the Esquire phase. You should be well into the phase to where you can actually. Uh, oh. You want children? Yes. When was your last time you had a girlfriend? My last time I was in a relationship was five years ago. Last time you had a girlfriend? Relationship was five years ago. Yes. Okay. Or technically call that a girlfriend. I don't. Yeah. Okay. 
That was a nice way of me mean, asking for preference, but I was trying to be delicate. Either my way. Yeah. Oh, am I gay or not? Nah, man. I'm 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 heterosexual. I was trying to be as political as I can. Um, oh, my because you said relationship. I mean, well, let's 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 move on because I don't want to get stuck there. <laughs> my my <laughs> point is that at this age, a man. This is see, the, the young man. This is a perfect example. If you, starting strong, focusing on building your wolf pack, building up your value, all that other stuff, networking, socializing, you develop the social skills in order to be able to effectively manage a woman. Should you choose to have one, now. This is the situation where I mean when you get in your 30s and it's time to add on a woman, you may have a career that has or money that makes, but you don't have the skill to add because you cannot maintain. That's where we're at. Brother, you ain't had a woman in five years. You can't maintain one. So it looks like all you got in your job is your job or to address your issues of not being able to handle and manage and facilitate a woman. Okay, that's an opinion. That, that's what I was saying. You, it's not about the job. It's you ain't had a woman in five years. When's the last time you've had adult relations? Then. Wow. Um. Fair question. Let's see. Two thousand. 20, I haven't really gotten out since the COVID hit. So my last sexual relationship would be about December-ish, 2020. Okay. And uh, you're, and you're making about how much annually? Over six right, now, right now, I make 155. And what, um, city? what state or what city or what state? I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, no offense, that's why I took you down. Your, your your intonation kind of threw me a little bit. Just just tell you. Um, My intonation? Your voice. But okay. we're going we're gonna to move on. But if you're making 150 in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. There's 17 women to every man. There is a man shortage in Atlanta for women. Meaning, if you just leave your house on a consistent basis, it's almost hard to not find a situation here in Atlanta. So are you are you working that are you working that hard to where you or are you just not leaving your house or are you just like uh, because a lot because we we men we we you know we want to do what we do and twenty twenty is a long time especially for a man who's earning what you're earning. That's why I said. There's some things going on here that I think that you may want to look at uh, that may help you get the outcome you want later on down the line. But I don't think it's, it's I don't hear a problem with earnings or, or, or the ability to provide. That's not what it is. It's, it sounds like some other stuff. And I don't want to get too deep into it because I got to get other people, get to other people. This would be something probably be good to book an individual session. Okay. Because Atlanta is a good place to do all of it. And there's some things that I would talk to you about offline that can maybe help you understand how people may be miscommunicating or misperceiving uh, your intentions. That's what an image oh. consultant does. Oh, okay. Have a good day. All right. See, one other thing, and here's another thing. I, I, did a, I did a training once upon, I did a training a few years back on, um, on interpersonal communication and intonation and voice. And here's a problem that unless you have, if you're a man and your voice does not go beyond a certain kind of register, if you're a man and your voice doesn't go behind, behind a certain kind of register, base register, um, having a higher pitched voice is something you must manage. Having a nasal tone is something you have to manage. Having a lazy tongue is something you have to manage. And if you have any of those things uh, coexisting together, is something you must manage. Guys with lower vo here or lower voices uh, tend to have better outcomes with women and men. 
So yeah, got to really be careful. Uh, all right, this dude is eating. So, Steve, you're not on camera. If you're not on camera, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna undo your mic. So, um, unmute yourself. I am okay. How old are you? How old are you? All right. What's your question? It's how do I manage not really knowing my purpose and being hard on myself, yet still being patient and letting it unfold, if that makes sense? Uh, kind of. I mean, at 22, you're not supposed to know your purpose. Yeah. At 22, you're supposed to get out and try to fail a lot so you can find your purpose. And you shouldn't be worried about where you're at until age 40. A lot of you young guys, because of instant, because of social media and the smartphone, think you're supposed to have it all figured out in your 20s. You're not supposed to have it figured out until 35, 40. 35 or 40 is where you're really supposed to have the uh, At 40 is the real mark. So, young guys, 40 and under, fail. 35 and under, especially. This is why you have no children. Because you can recover from multiple failures. You want to stop failing when, you, when you're at a stable place is when you're ready for a relationship and, and that kind of stuff. So you got, you, you're halfway there. So you shouldn't be hard on yourself so your expectation shouldn't be anything. You should be breaking even. Even having being in the red. You got time to recover at 22. Make sense? Yeah, make perfect sense. Thank you. Yeah, No problem. This is kind of like, you know, at being young, you have more you have more opportunity and time to recover from bad investments and everything else like that. You should you should be doing aggressive things in your twenties. This is why I'm such a big fan of moving to larger cities. Um, unmute yourself. Hello. Uh, how old are you? Twenty seven. Okay, uh, what's your, uh, and your name is? Okay, what's your question? You became, you became, you became what? Three months ago? A freight broker. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. If okay, you understand what that is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see that you're pretty good in sales. I want to, can you kind of help me like kind of sell myself better? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, what's the ultimate question though? This, this is about, what I'm talking about, 18 to 29, Esquire phase of life. So do you have an ultimate question or are you trying to uh, become a better person for your business? Uh, basically become a better person. But the thing is, I'm, I kind of took the hard route. I uh, sacrificed everything to get where I'm at. Okay. Uh, I got a family with me. I got a uh, a girlfriend now. Okay. I got a second question. I'm ask about that. I got a girlfriend too. Okay. I don't, but I don't, but I don't understand the question. I think the question you said is how to sell yourself better. Um, okay, so base, uh, I put it like this: It's kind of hard for me to find freight brokers' information on YouTube. You know, I you find YouTube to help better yourself without putting the money behind myself because I'm kind of like I'm unemployed. Uh, I just started a business, and all the money I got behind me is my girlfriend, and I don't want to uh, like hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You invested yeah. all your money into starting this business, basically. Yeah, I used and to uh, be a and you're unemployed, driver. and you're unemployed. Yes, sir. I kind of sacrifice everything to get one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, my bad. How long have you been doing this business? I just started. And how, what does that mean? What does that mean? Three months. Three months. And you've been unemployed for how long? Ooh, close to almost a year. It's been kind of hard to get everything together. What city do you live in? Uh, I moved from Birmingham, Alabama to uh, Houston, Texas. Sir? This is unacceptable. Yeah, I know. I hope you didn't come here looking for sympathy. Oh, no, 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 no. Heck no. You're, do you have both your limbs? Yes, sir. Then why don't you have a job? Because I... All right, so long story short. I used to be I don't, no, no long story. Dude, you're 29 years old. 
saying I'm a freight broker and I've invested. No, I'm 27. Yeah. 27, whatever. You've used words like invest in business. You're unemployed, living off your girlfriend. Now, uh, I use stock options, but I make good money off stock options, but at the same time, I lost a lot of money because I get a little greedy from here and there. But it kind of helped out too. So it's kind of been like some stock options from there and some earning too. How much are you earning a month? Ooh, shit. Uh, about under a thousand. Depending on how then don't tell me go. damn thing about stock options. Negro, yes, you need a job. Yes, sir. Get off YouTube, get off Instagram, get off TikTok, get off your ass, and go to fuck to work. Yes, sir. I so wish you, I w no, 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 there ain't nothing else to say. And, I, and she must not have a daddy. Because if she had yes, a daddy, no, she hadn't, he can't be about shit because he couldn't be around my damn daughter. I mean, I'm the one that. Eh, I don't want to hear it. Why did I do that? Because, guys, look, we got to call bullshit when we see it. Starting a business, trying, but unemployed, earning less than $1,000 annual on the internet, you got to get out and make money to invest in yourself and to increase your competency. And you got a girlfriend. We all know he's using his, his penis. I don't think you should be fucking with that when you're broke. You can't afford the outcomes if it happened. I told you, Houston, the finesse capital of the country is Houston. Houston got all kind of running. When you run into a woman from Houston and she say, I'm dealing with this, dealing with that, I'm telling you, Houston, finesse capital. You got a lot of shit running through Houston, man. <laughs> Jeremiah laughing because he know I'm telling the truth. I mean, I mean, I'm like, come on, man, I can't, I can't have. No, nah, go ahead. We are gonna scratch, scratch that and that. All right, Jeremiah, what's going on, man? How you doing, Mister Kevs? Nice meeting. I, I, I'm all right. How old are you, man? I'm 29 years old. All right. What's your question? Uh, I guess my question would be: uh, I know you said the Esquire stage would be between the ages of 18 to 29, correct? Yeah. Um. So me being 29, I'm a truck driver by trade. Um, uh -huh. I went to I went to uh, Prairie View A&M uh, okay. for engineering, but I didn't finish, so I ended up being a truck driver. So um, okay, saying that um, financially, what, what what should be my next steps? You know. Um, well, I mean, okay, 29. I say the next phase of life is you got to you're a truck driver. You're already kind of going down the bachelor phase. Right. Right. Correct. You, you have a solitary profession. Right. Not really a family man profession. Not today. Right. Right. Uh, so what should be your next phase? Uh, well, where do you do you want do you want and desire to have children? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I'm the I'm the youngest so, of four actually. So and so that means you want the wife that comes with it. Absolutely, yes, sir. So that means you're going to be able to be in a position to employ that wife. Right, correct. So that means what? You can't just drive trucks. You're going to need to have a business. Either. That's your next phase. What do you know about the business? Uh, I mean, I'm working for owner operators and stuff like that. So, I mean, I know the ins and outs. I'm seven years in the game. So, okay. It, but it, do you know enough to go get a small business loan to start your own business? I would say so, yes, sir. Yeah. Well, then, uh, then go. Yeah. If you know enough about the, see, that's the that's the great divide. There's a, what if, but what if on. I'm not okay? There's the you you can only work for somebody for so long before you start your own business or you're gonna get fired one day because right. you're gonna become too expensive, right, and right. you can't progress to the next phase of life without the additional money. Right. That means wife and children are an unlikely eventuality on this way. But right. And and but the but the but the next fate the question you're about to ask is what? But what if? But what if like truck driving is just not my true passion? I mean, I it pays the bills. I don't care about your passion. 
Right. Okay. Who told you get to follow your passion? <laughs> Fuck your passion. Fuck Pay my the bill. passion. I, I'm with it. You know, I, didn't, right. I didn't follow my passion. I did what I had to do. All right. Passion is same here. Women and I children was... can follow passion. Men got to do what we got to do. Say that. You're going to hey, follow man. your passion as a, the dude before me was following his passion. Right. Okay? I went to school what, for engineering. What exactly. You do what we have to do. <laughs> man, men do what we have to do until we can Say do that. what we want to do. So right. if you want children and family, there's your path. But you got to be able to afford it. And if not, I'm in the Houston, bachelor phase of life, but, but but you got it. But see, the thing is, you say you've been in the business for seven years. Then here's right. the time to put it on paper and really see if you have what it takes to become the owner, operator, own your own business, hire other people, such and so forth. Or maybe you need to go back and get some additional skills to learn how to run the business, learn how to manage people, which is still a transferable skill is going to be required to have a wife and children anyway. So right. there you go. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kev. Have a good best one. All right, thanks very much. Let me check what's going on in the comment section. I know some people think I was kind of hard, but man, look, no. What did it when he said I had a girlfriend and I'm living off of her? I'm gonna tell you right now, the way my manhood is set up, I can't live off no woman and I ain't working. You know, it's one thing if she's starting a business, you starting a business, but you know what I'm saying. Come on, not for a year? No, man, no, no, man. Passion. Passion, purpose, all these are words that um um let me say this. Let me let me let me not be too harsh. Gentlemen, you can deal with your passion after 45. You get to let me say this, guys. I'll see you in the Zoom. Hold, hold on just a second, fellas. Hold on. I see, I see you five. From 18 to 40, you gotta give you gotta get those two decades to the game. From 40 to 45, you look at over at your career and you say, All right, I'ma do this until I retire, or I've given enough blood. And from 40 to 45, you plan your escape. Okay, and then you can start your own shit between 40 and 45. But after 45, you either in or you out. Uh, are you Raheem? Uh, good night, Mr. Hello, Samuels. how old are you? I'm 19. All right, uh, Raheem, Donovan, Craig, then Hugh. How are uh, you 19? What's your question? Right, so my question is, uh, I work for Big Four right now, right? Okay. So a lot of the summits that used to happen uh, with the bankers and other accountants in my field, it doesn't happen anymore. Um, I have a, like a semi-decent amount of connections on uh, LinkedIn, but I feel like I'm not really utilizing it that well. Like, so I just want any you What's have the question? advice on that. Advice on like utilizing my uh, LinkedIn connections better. Okay, like, why does, why, where you live? What city do you live in? Oh, um, I'm in Jamaica. Yeah, so I'm in a whole different country. Okay, your LinkedIn connection getting. Okay, getting your LinkedIn connections up to do what? Right, so I'm just, I just want to make a stronger network so that uh, more opportunities can come my way. Um. Are you planning on staying in Jamaica? Uh no no no. I'm gonna come to the U.S. after my um, after my uh professional examinations. When, when when will that be? Well, four years time. Excuse me. Four years. Well, I mean, the reality is, look, man, I'm not a big fan of passive networking. LinkedIn, LinkedIn is secondary. Um, um, how effectively are you networking in person in Jamaica? Uh, well, I network into this job right here because I'm fresh out of high school into a big four. Uh, okay. So. I think I do semi well. I wanted to continue because I started pretty late. Well, I guess what I'm ultimately saying is LinkedIn is mm -hmm. is 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 this like it's not like online dating, but I'm gonna use it that way. Look, do you get out and and and, and socialize and network where you are? I try to as there's best no, as I can. No, 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 no. There's no try. There's no see, lazy, lazy guys. One thing I'm always going to hammer on is you guys are so fucking lazy bro 
Y'all are young. You got y'all y'all you piss like racehorses and you still got morning wood and your dick is like this in the morning. Mine is too, but you know what I mean. Y'all lazy as fuck, man. Get out of the house. Shower, shave, sleep, shit is what you're supposed to be at home for. The rest of your life in Jamaica, wherever you are, you should be pressing palms in somebody's face, in a bitch face, in a dude's face. Networking in a woman's face for one thing, in a dude's face for business. So those skills will follow you to the United States or wherever you go. But LinkedIn is the easy, safe way. That is a backup. I wish you, how many people you want to network with on LinkedIn who don't know you? Man, I'm going to open your email. People need a personal connection. Y'all got to stop being so damn lazy. That's what it really comes down to. And you young guys, understand something. When I was you, when I was your age, it's because I would get out there in my suit uh, that was not necessarily tailored right as a young guy. The older guys would see me and say, at least this young motherfucker showed up. Let me take you under my wing. Let me put you up on some game because I showed up in my ill-fitting Calvin Klein, or what was that cheap-ass suit back then? It was some cheap shit. But I showed up. You got to show up, guys. Life is about showing up. Appreciate it. Uh, Donovan, Craig, then uh, go ahead and bounce out, Raheem. Donovan, on mute. Hey, Donovan, how old are you? 19. How you doing, Miss Samuels? I'm well. What's your question? Um, so I'm new to college and I have little background knowledge on the different frat groups. And I guess I'm asking you um, what what type of people or what, what to look for so I can get the most out of joining any type of group. Fraternity? Yes. Uh, fraternity what school do you go to? I go to Rowan University. Rome? For Rowan. Yeah, Rowan, Rowan University. Uh, are you talking about traditionally and- black fraternities or are you talking about all of them? Um, see, see, that's the thing. So I don't, I don't really have any. All right. Well, I'm going to speak to the black fraternity. Yeah. yeah. My when I was in college, my, my roommate in college, he played Lambda Chi Alpha. That was a social fraternity. They really didn't do anything. Many of these guys de-pledged and didn't follow up with each other, even after their sophomore, after their sophomore year versus a black fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi. Alpha Phi Alpha, Phi Beta Sigma, Omega Psi Phi, and to a lesser degree, Iota. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, Iotas, I forget. Iota, Iotas. I don't want to mess their letters up. All right. The, the traditional black fraternities, um, I still interact with people I went to college with, people I've known mm-hmm. for years. It pays okay. dividends. Um, mm-hmm. But you have to go to, but they have to have a chapter on your campus or you have to go to the nearest college that has the fraternities you're looking for and see when they pl- have a, a line that's coming up. Right. If not, you have to wait till alumni. Okay. Um, what's your major? Architectural engineering. And what city, what city is your college in? Um, it's in Glassboro. It's a small little town. Glassboro. Um, State. New State. Jersey. Jersey? Uh, well, uh, guys who go to small schools like that tend to wait and have to pledge alumni. And then mm. you really play, you really choose the fraternity based upon um, who's who's dominant, um, who's, you, you, a lot of guys choose uh, based upon the guys they know, how, how uh, the impact the organization has in their okay. area. Uh, but you got to choose a fraternity lifetime. Like when I was in OU, Phi Beta Sigma, uh, really were, they had a, a lot of members, but, uh, they weren't the top, but like mm-hmm. on the West coast, like in around Oakland and Bay area, Phi Beta Sigma was strong. Right. When I was at OU, the Kappas were really popular until a chapter ended up having to lead the yard for a few years and the alphas became really popular. I pledged Kappa uh, when the chapter was just coming back off probation, but it was based on the fact that when I was growing up, all the men, the majority of the men I knew uh, who were teachers, 
uh, businessmen, um, superintendents, movers and shakers were all Kappas. Oh, wow. uh, and they were, and, and all their wives, for the most part, were AKAs. And mm-hmm. the ones that weren't Kappas, it was like a spattering of them was Alphas and, and Omegas. But it really kind of just depends. But alumni is a good, as a good, um, it's a good thing to think about, but then you got to wait till you graduate for that. Okay, that's that's cool. Uh, all the okay. time in the world. <laughs> well, I mean, mm, see, one of the best things I did was uh, getting involved early because I was able to build my network. See, while I was in school, when I was a freshman, freshman, I was just like most guys, you know. I, I had my fair share with the ladies, but once mm. I pledged my second semester. I, we had more pull than the athletes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere I went, it was like being a super rock star. No, time, no, oh. I would never give up my college experience. Even oh. though, so, and the thing is, once you're out of school, you may have the or the fraternity, but you may not have the campus and the college life. Right. That's right. why the, the university where you pick to go to school has to have the right balance of academics and mm-hmm. student life. I understand. So you got a lot to think about, but you know, choose wisely because you can only pick one. Black All fraternities. Right. Okay. Appreciate. Uh, it. Craig, unmute yourself. How's it going, Kevin? Hey, how old are you? I'm 29. All right. What's your question? My question is, how do you know, or what would your uh, how, how do you know when it's time to transition from one sales career to another sales career? Because I'm a real estate agent. And sales? I'm, um, yes, sales, correct. Okay. And um, I don't know if it's too early to transition or if it's just- Are you talking about of, transition working hard. industry? Are you talking about transition from sales to management? Or are you talking about leaving one sales industry for another? Yeah, one sales industry to a, a different industry. Depends on what industry you're talking about. Okay, and I guess my next question is what, because I know you went, you were in telecommunications, what made you choose that one? Well, they chose me, actually. Okay. When I when I, I was actually waiting tables at Papado, and I, I told the story about a vice president of small, uh, MCI Small Business, I ended up waiting on him and his wife, and he offered me a job. He recruited me away, and then I worked my way up through that. Um, Right now, um, real estate, see, real estate insurance will always be around. And I'll tell you why they'll always be around, because you don't have to go to college to necessarily do it. Um, they, they recruit from the public at large. You get a, a license that's, you know, take a test, get a license. And then you go out and then do all the investment yourself. Uh, ask you some questions. Um, what is your underlying underlying sales school or your sales philosophy? Underlying sales school. To be honest, I don't have one. Okay. I just see that's the big, that's the big problem. A lot of times, see like Dale Carnegie, Zig Ziglar, D. I. Sandler. Some it's like. Every NFL team runs some sort of offense and some base defense. Right. What is your base sales philosophy? And most don't. Most just go work for these organizations and they you pass a test and they put sales on you, but you're really not sales. So when you go in to sit down with a recruiter and you go interview for some of these jobs, it's almost like it's almost being entry level. Um, uh, um, my suggestion I went before I switched training before I would think switching industries you need some basic sales training Sandler's always good because in any sales the closer you get to 100% commission the more you're in control of the, the bigger your checks can get the right. larger your base salary the less you are in sales Mm-hmm. I've talked to people who had who were seventy percent base salary, and we laugh at those guys. We call them business development managers. We call them pikers. They fucking suck, and they get mad at us because, it's like, well, when you're eight, when you're seventy percent commission, that means you got to kill 
You got it. everything you eat and you killed it. Right. Your balls are different when you are 70, 80, 90, 100% commission. Because you know you can get out there and create. You can make it happen. A guy who is 70, 80, 90% salary and the rest commission, take their salary away, they're, they're dragging. I would consider, I would ask myself, am I in sales and what's my sales philosophy? And do I want to stay in this? Because sales starts with learning how to go into a market and to sell it. You got to prospect it. You got you to profile it, prospect it, cold call it, run appointments, close, follow up. There's a lot of shit to do. Okay, cool. And if I may share one last thing, because that's to your point. As I started taking sales more seriously and you know seeking out mentors and actually you know, building systems, I started going on more appointments and getting and getting more deals. So now it's like, I guess I was getting a little bit too caught up in the social media and like how fast, you know, the results come for realtors or whatever and expecting it to be a little bit faster uh, based on what you said. It's just, just grinding. Real, I mean, real estate is, a lot of realtors get mad at me because I say it's really not sales. It's really not. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's brand management. Sales is, Take this and go sell it to a market. They got a smart, they got an Android, go sell them an Apple. Or they got a, a, a desktop, go sell them a laptop. Or they got a horse, go sell them a car. Or they don't need any of it, go sell them a luxury item. The house is just there. People are already looking. That's just a different form of retail. People go, you're not really selling when somebody comes to a market ready to buy. Um, I would say before we typically want to go to mentor route, you need to go the sales training route. How many thousands of dollars have you invested in your actual sales competency in a classroom setting? I would say since 2018, uh, maybe anywhere from like five to 7,000, I'd say. That you've spent it yourself? Yeah, I put it on credit for the most part. Okay. And what's it what system did you what? So I have a, a mentor. He's, his name is uh Brian Casella. He has a program called Modern Success. And he's oh, a real okay. Yeah. So this is okay. So it's not See, like one of those institutional ones that, that you Yeah, I'm not a big fan of those. I'm gonna tell you why I'm not a big fan of those. Because I'm just be honest. I don't. I'm not disparaging your guy. Look, I could, I, I could put. I could put something together called high value men sales, right. and I'm good enough to tell you how to prospect, sell, and such and so forth. But I wouldn't do it because of my my, my ethics. I, mean, I wouldn't just. I I could. Everything I just ran down to you, I could bring you guys in on the weekend and teach you everything. But what I would be teaching you is stuff that I learned from somebody else. That's their proprietary stuff. That's why I'm saying Sandler. It means something to have Sandler or DEI or something like that on your resume because it's a standard. Um, and it's a and it's not just a weekend. It's like several weeks. So um, I love being in sales. It's the closest to being an entrepreneur. You can be for working with somebody else. But you're going to still have the same issue that most people have in real estate, insurance, all these things. There's one thing to be an individual producer. Another thing to be a manager and an owner, where are you learning that skill? Because as long as you're an individual producer, it's it, LeBron has to retire sooner or later. You don't see lots of old salespeople. Okay, gotcha. So I got right. Sandler and DEI. I appreciate that. All right. Hugh, you gonna mute yourself? Hi, can you hear me, uh, Mr. Samuels? I can. How old are you? Uh, I'm 26. Uh, can I stay off YouTube, please? Yeah. Uh, what's your question? So uh, my question is, can I, uh, in in your experience, as far as the corporate world is concerned, um, I'm looking to do a PhD in a particular type of engineering. Would it, Would you advise that I get an MBA while I'm doing my PhD in addition to that? Get your MBA while getting your PhD in engineering? Yes, sir. To what outcome? Uh, ultimately speaking, um, for a couple of reasons. The outcome that 
ultimately speaking, I would be looking for specifically is to be, be able to have the option to do a non-research job uh, on my as my regular nine to five, uh, while also doing research as an entrepreneur myself um, on the side, on the off time, weekends, evenings, which I can very well do. Uh, okay. There are a group of people I'm, I'm uh, closely affiliated with that okay. would be happy to help me do that. Hence my question. Well, okay. How long, okay, you're saying basically to do non-research work in your part-time as an entrepreneur. Do you, yes, are, okay, how long do you plan on staying in, the, in, in your industry or your field as a career? Um, uh, frankly, sir, I have no idea. Um, well, see, what, I, you're I doing, hope... what you're already doing is you're trying to, you, you got a whole career that you have to start and you're already looking for the side job. Okay. Um, that's, it's, that's not necessarily a function of education. Okay. You, you have to put in like the, ten, the, the 10,000 hour mastery principle. You got five years of doing your baseline research work before you really should start doing anything off the side. I mean, would that not be fair to say? Uh, absolutely. So an MBA in tandem, what is an MBA going to, what do you think an MBA is going to impart to you to help you become an entrepreneur? Uh, frankly, uh, a plethora of things. First one is accounting. Second one, uh, is to have a better understanding of at least the background details as far as uh, an LLC, uh, perhaps uh, your own uh, S. But you, don't need, but you don't need you don't need an MBA for that. All you need is you need to sit down with a consultant or an accountant for that. You don't need I was not aware. You don't need. I, I was not aware of that. But see what you what you're trying to do is everything yourself. And what I'm hearing is if you're going to be doing research and PhD for your research. Focus on your career first and don't try to, you're trying to do too much. And they all sounds okay. good, PhD, MBA, MOUSE, but you mm -hmm. have 24 hours a day, seven days. And let me transition this, how old are you? 26, sir. Um, when will you have your PhD completed? Uh, in three years, sir. Uh, fast forward to age 40, do you want children? Do you not know yet? It's fine if you don't know. Uh, oh, uh, frankly, I the the answer is that if I desire them, yes. Um, but I'm also well. Okay, so yes, I would say this: don't get don't get so hung up on the letters. You know, PhD, okay. MBA. That's a lot of education. It still comes down to money. And the you talk and the things you're talking about doing on the side. See, MBAs don't have the impact they had 30 years ago. Yes, sir. They just simply don't, um, you know, and I know a lot of MBAs will get mad at me, but if they're honest, MBAs have more impact in the nineties, uh, and in the early part of 2000, they do now. So have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Clean up that room, boy. Sit in these frat houses. Uh, I'll answer a few more questions. Yeah, guys, you know, a lot of times, see, oftentimes when guys are young in their career, they think overloading on the titles. But that's the beautiful thing about being in sales. I, I knew guys who went to, who had Ivy League educations. And I, you kick their ass because they come down to production. Your education, your degree matters when you get your first job more than anything else. But after that, it tends to be about your production. Um, all right, this guy is not on camera. I'm gonna remove him. And did it do? All right. If you've been on before, I'm going to ask you that you don't pop in. Uh, let's do it this way. Uh, what happened to oh, Alex? Unmute yourself, Alex. Unmute yourself, Alex. 
Hello? Hello? How old are you? Alex, how old are you? Okay. All right. Bye bye, Alex. Sorry there, partner. Frederick, unmute yourself. Hello? I'm well. How old are you? Say again. All right. What's your question? is uh so i go to a pwi and i'm, uh, and I'm actually there for my uh, for my mbm my master's business management okay uh, and like one thing i noticed uh while i was there been is though i'm in there with a bunch of um of white people is that um they are way more articulate than than i am i come from from a mm -hmm. from a, a hood background what's your question uh, how, to, how to become a better speaker yes Toastmasters. Uh, Toastmasters. 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 Um, that's number one. Um, also, I always recommend improv classes, whether acting improv or doing improv comedy. Become quick with it. That's number one. Number two. Um, when's the last time you read a book? No offense. When's the last time you read a book? I read a. Look, I read. I read all the time. I read. Okay. I read a lot. I read a lot of. Uh, okay, then read aloud. Read what? Read aloud. Okay. 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 Yeah. See this whole notion that we have bigger lips, thicker tongue. I'm very. You, you can practice this away. James Earl Jones was a mute for the first four years of his life. Practice. Hmm. Practice. It's not necessarily because you were a hood background or whatever. We just have lazy communication. So you have to practice. Pick up yeah. a book, read. And focusing on enunciation and pronunciation. And you have the mouth exercise and all this, but started with Toastmasters and being able to stand up and giving a speech while you're practicing on. And if, and if necessary, hire a speech. Uh, a speech pathologist and work with a speech, work with somebody, invest in it. Being well spoken, mm -hmm. being articulate, uh, is a transferable skill. And yeah. then being able to speak hood, street, whatever, code switch is valuable. Yeah. Hell, I do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah. right. So, yeah. uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody has a everybody has a colloquialism. So, uh, Andrew, and then Richard. Andrew, how, hello? I'm okay, how old are you? What's your question? I mean, financially, obviously, uh, or where I feel like I should be. Okay. Um, my question is, uh, what are some skills that I can learn to start making myself more valuable on the job market? You're you're behind in life financially, and you want to know some skills to make yourself more valuable. Yes, sir. Did you go to college? Um, I have an associate. In what? Um, applied science. Uh, are you fully employed? Yes, sir. I have. I actually have two jobs. What do you do? Um, I my first my main job. Um, I deliver and install appliances, and then mm -hmm. when I get off, I work at a warehouse. Um unloading planes for FedEx. Okay, you need a profession. Okay. That's simple as that. Your 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 manual unskilled labor, no offense. Mm -hmm. But in this world competence gets compensated. What are you competent at that the economy needs? You need a profession. This is where trade comes in. Um you already do a manual labor, why not become a skilled tradesman? Heating an okay. HVAC technician, plumber, electrician, roofer. Certify, I mean, mechanic, do something, get one trade and then get a backup trade. Because um, at 34, it's, unless you're going to college to go, go to law school or something like that, it's kind of pointless. Yeah, um, I, I was I was going to, uh, uh, my goal was to use that, that science degree to go and- I don't know, you're that science, that associates is worthless. 
I mean, you're 34. I'm applied science. So it's either trade, uh, you know, and there's a big push to become, you know, trucking or coding, science, technology, engineering, math, but you got to become skilled at something. And uh, you have any children? No, sir. What city do you live in? Um, I'm in Lubbock. I've, I've actually been wanting to move to Oh, oh yeah, yeah. See, stop, stop right there. You, you small town, you got to get the fuck out of, come on, man. Yes, Lubbock, sir. Texas, only thing worse is Midland, Odessa. Come on, man. Get out yes, of there. Sir. Gotta get out of there. And, and, and seriously, you gotta get out of like tomorrow. Because those environments uh, are not for young men, especially not young single. And it will, it'll take your zest for life away because Lubbock is loaded with lots of engineers and people who work in oil and gas. That's not where you are. Leave. Leave, leave, leave like tomorrow. Um, science, engineering, technology, math, trucking, some sort of trade. And uh, be prepared to uh, lose a lot of sleep because it's not going to be easy, but you better take this next five years to invest and turn things around to enjoy the, to have a more fruitful uh, remainder of your life. Because if you don't make a change before 40, you're going to be pretty much stuck. Okay. All right. Well, All right. All right. Thank you don't you. want to be stuck at 40 years old, especially as a black man. Go ahead. Uh, Richard. Richard. I can. Uh, how old are you? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, what's your question? Well, um, recently I've had a change of heart because I've had a, a long history of, you know, being idle, go, go doing some kind of degree in, in uh, computer development, 3D development, but ultimately I didn't care. So I decided to pursue a, um, a, a What's degree your question, in sir? construction work. What's your and question? Now, well, um, I, the intention is that I, of course, earn more money by doing construction work because it generally pays well, but I don't think I'm, I'm really going to make the kind of money that I want to make in order to pursue my kind of goals. What is that? Well, I have a background in aviation and I really okay. kind of want to... Sir, 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 you're 27? Sorry. Yes. Pick something, do it. You guys all want to be international men of mystery. You don't get to follow your passion. You don't get to do what you want to do. You got to mm -hmm. go to work and make some fucking money. Tomorrow. When you retire, follow your passion. Between now and then, make some fucking money. Okay, that makes sense. And one of the surest things is you guys are, you guys lack confidence in your communication. When I ask you guys direct questions, you're still thinking because you know you're trying to kind of hide something. The answer is, I'm not, I, 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 what I can do for a living doesn't pay the kind of money I want, but what I want to do, I'm not qualified for. You mentioned earlier that you said uh, uh, a lack of confidence in communication. What what specifically do you mean with well, that? Well, I kept sir? asking you. What's the, I asked you three times. What's the question? And you kept talking instead of just getting oh. to the question, getting to the point. When you're confident in the communication, you can get direct to the point. Right. And it's not it's not just you. It's it's a thing with many men when we're not confident. Have a good day, guys. Here's going to be the here's going to be the great rub for many men. Between 18 and 23 is where you start. You set the mark. This is where you invest because you do not want to get into your late 20s not having tried a lot of things because you're going to start trying to make decisions based upon theory. Not your experience. When you reach close to 30, you want to make the decisions for the next phase of life based upon what you have tried. But notice the common denominator. How do I get to the next phase of life while I'm being 
not working as hard as I can, not being as active as I can, not taking as many risks when I'm effectively going to work and chilling. You can't. You're going to look up and you're going to be 30. And you have had tr and you tried nothing new. Life happens between 18 and 29. You could be a young guy. You could do all that stuff, but you're going to age out. 18 to 29 is what I call a rap phase of life. You don't see many 35-year-old rappers just getting into the business. You have to start aging up your content, too. You have to, at 26 or 27, you can still keep your ear to the street, know what's going on, but you also need to start learning about R&B, jazz. You need to continue to evolve. Like on Wednesday... We're going to talk about the evolution. Many men get stuck in youthful pursuits. You don't want to evolve from jeans, t-shirt, tennis shoes to trousers, button up and dress shoes. You think wearing a suit is restrictive. You don't want to move on and you get stuck and when you're stuck 29 to 33, you're still young enough to remember your 20s. But when you reach 34 to 40, it's very, it's not appealing to see guys stuck. Because you reach 40 and you're still stuck in your 20 year old, in your 20 somethings mindset, image, and go to market strategy. You may remember the 20 year old you. You may still feel that way, but you got gray hairs coming out here and there, and those 20-year-old dudes are calling you that old dude. I don't hang out with a bunch. I mean, I talk to young men all the time, but I would look foolish trying to hang with some 20-somethings. We're in different phases of life. We can work together. We can collaborate and do business, but each decade in life needs to come with um, increasing levels of gravitas and respect. But in, in the black community in particular, we're such a youth-driven culture, we think when you get old, you become lame. Fuck that. Y'all just need to, we need to continue to grow. All right, guys. Instagram, tomorrow. Um, It's Men's Week on YouTube. I got some things I want to pop off on um. Uh, on Instagram. Are you guys liking the clips? Everybody ask for clips. Are you guys liking the clips? I'm going to be doing more clips. If you like the clips, uh, tell me you like the If you like the clips, write clips down in the comment section and head to your comment. Also, reaction videos. I'm going to re be reacting to some of the stuff too because <laughs> we're we, we going to get on up there, man. This has been good. This is good. Guys, just remember, you got to put yourself out there. Your network is your net worth. How I was able to move is because I was willing to quit my job as the research engineer and, and go work waiting tables at Papado. Well, I worked at Papado. I, I went to got uh, recruited away to work at that call center for MCI, hundreds of people, and I networked in there. The network I made, I'm, the friends I made there were the people I moved to Austin and to Dallas with. And from Dallas, when I went to move to a different company, the company I worked in Dallas with are the people I moved from Dallas to Houston with. You don't move alone out here. The lone wolf dies in the winter. The pack survives. And in order to find a wolf pack, you must leave your house with the in express intention of meeting somebody, with networking. Like I said to that first guy, you, 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 you don't just go to the bowling alley with some women. You get out of your house and go somewhere and you open your mouth and talk to people. This is why I want to talk to black men. Black men, we have been put at odds with each other so long, we don't talk. Not white guys, hey man, they'll buy the bar, buy you a drink. Hey buddy, how you doing? They're friendly. We think them being friendly is corny and lame. Dude, they're lapping you. Become the brother that buys another man a drink.
Hey man, what's going on? Let me another another shot. Another whatever. All right, what you drinking on? Cool. What's up, man? All right. Be that you started. And and you're going to increase your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your connections. Man, life is about connections. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the game right there. Life is about connection. Life happens out there, life is about people. All right, people. Y'all know how it goes. Your godfather is about to be out here until the next time. Peace. We are gone.